Welcome. I'd like to give you the loving kindness instructions for the beginner's meditation practice. I want to start off by saying that this practice is a feeling meditation. While you might be using verbalizations like, may I be happy, may I be content, may I be at peace, and so on, that's more than enough to get your feeling started. And what I mean by that is you're not going to be saying those words over and over and over again like a mantra meditation. This verbalization just helps you to stay with that feeling. You say it one time or two times, and then when you get that experience of the feeling in your chest, in the center of your heart, there's this warm, fuzzy, glowing feeling that you'll get. And that's really loving kindness. It can help to think about something that makes you happy, like holding a baby in your arms or uh, holding a puppy or a kitten in your arms or whatever makes you happy. You might even think about a wholesome memory that you had as a kid or whatever works for you. As soon as you feel that warm glow that is loving kindness, you maintain it by just keeping your attention there. You don't need to push it. You don't need to try to do anything with it or control it. Just stay with it. Keep your attention on it and just rest in that. And the second uh, point that I want to make here that's actually very crucial is you'll see me, this little guy here, he's, he's smiling. And he's not smiling for any, any uh, reason in particular, but it's a good teaching for us to be able to do that in our meditation. You'll see that in a lot of the Buddhist iconography of the Buddha, uh, whether it's pictures or statues, he has a little Buddha smile. He has a little smile, and that's a teaching for us to do that in our practice. Now, while you're smiling with your lips, you're also having a little smile in the mind, in your eyes, and in the heart. And that just basically means you're content, and you're relaxed, and everything is fine. You're letting go of all kinds of thoughts about the outside world. You know, you can put aside whatever you have to do for about 30 minutes. This is a vacation time for you for the next 30 minutes. You're just going to be here with loving kindness. Now, once you have that feeling, that warm, fuzzy, glowing feeling in the, in the center of your chest, you send that to yourself. So just keep feeling that for the first 10 minutes. And after, the, after that 10 minutes has elapsed, you send it out to a spiritual friend. Now, the spiritual friend if somebody, is somebody of the same sex. They're alive and they're not a family member. You'll be dealing with family members at a later stage in the practice. But for the time being, they're just a friend. Somebody that you know personally. Somebody that, uh, well, it could be even, you know, somebody like the Dalai Lama. But working with somebody who is a spiritual friend that's personal to you is much more effective. So you think about somebody that puts a smile on your face, that would be a perfect candidate for a spiritual friend. As long as they're of the same sex, uh, as long as they're not a family member, and as long as they're alive. So now that you have this feeling of loving kindness in your chest, you can imagine them being in front of you, the spiritual friend, and that you're sending it out to them. You can imagine them smiling and receiving that loving kindness. Or you can just put them in the middle of that feeling in your heart and just allow them to be basking in that glow of loving kindness. And it's that, it's that simple. That's really this beginning practice, is you're staying with your spiritual friend. That loving kindness is your object of meditation. Now, while that sounds very simple, it's easier said than done when you have distractions. And these distractions come in the form of different kinds of hindrances. And whatever the hindrance might be, it is a hindrance that might uh, arise in the way of some kind of sensual craving. You might hear something outside and your mind starts to deviate its attention towards that. Or it might irritate you and that's a, a sense of aversion, that's ill will. Or you might feel restless, or you might feel slot and torpor, or you might have some doubts, you know, in the form of, am I doing this right? You know, am I doing the loving kindness meditation correctly? Am I radiating correctly to my spiritual friend? All of those thoughts you can just let go of. 
And there is a very special and very important way in the way you let go of these hindrances. And this is the process of the six R's. The six R's are number one, recognize. Number two, release. Number three, relax. Number four, re-smile. Number five, return. And number six, repeat. Now, if there are thoughts in the background, if certain kinds of thoughts are there, but your mind is uh, attentive to its loving kindness, to the object of loving kindness and the spiritual friend, then you don't need to do the six R's. Those background thoughts will fade away on their own because they no longer have the fuel of your attention. But as soon as, let's say this is your object, this here is your object, and this is the mind resting on it, as soon as it goes away like this, that means now the attention is no longer resting here, but is thinking about something else. That's fine. Don't beat yourself, about, uh, don't beat yourself up for it. Just understand that in that moment, the truth of the moment is the mind is distracted. So don't try to fight it. Don't try to push it. Don't try to do anything with it. There's another statement called drops. That is, don't resist or push, soften and smile. And this is already within this process of the six R's. And I'll explain that now. Now, let's say that the mind becomes distracted and its attention is deviated from loving kindness and it's somewhere else. When you notice that and you realize that you're distracted, you're already using the first R, which is recognize. Now you take away your attention from that hindrance and you intend to relax the mind and body. So you're doing the releasing of the attention from there and you're doing the relaxed step. Now the relaxed step is what sets this meditation apart from any other practice. The reason is because the tightness and tension you feel from that distraction, from the mind that is filled with the hindrance, is a mind that's manifesting craving. That tightness and tension is craving. When you relax that tightness and tension, you are abandoning, you are letting go, you are relinquishing that craving. And you'll immediately notice that when you do that, and how do you know you're relaxing? Well, one of the ways you know is when you're tightening your fist and you let go, it's relaxed. And so in the same way, you feel the tension, you realize there's tension and you let it go. And you feel this open mind, this mind that is spacious, this mind that's like a cloudless blue sky. And when you have that clarity of mind, you re-smile. The reason you're re-smiling is, is because you're bringing up a wholesome object again. That smile anchors you to the feeling of loving kindness. So when you smile, you are re-sharpening your mindfulness. You are recollecting the mind, meaning you're collecting its attention back. And that's when you do the return step. You come back to the feeling of loving kindness and you stay with the object of meditation. Now, if you get distracted again, you use repeat. You do it over again. There might be a time where the hindrance, you let go and it comes back again. No big deal. It'll come back again, but it will be weaker the next time around. So you do the same process. It might come back again, but it'll be even weaker this time around. And eventually it will fade away every time you do the six hours, whenever your mind's attention moves away from its object of meditation. So this is the practice in a nutshell. Once you experience certain kinds of phenomena in the body, which is to say you start losing feeling in the body, you start feeling more equanimous. So you'll go through a series of different things. You'll start feeling first greater joy. You'll feel elation. You'll feel all kinds of things. Eventually that joy will kind of taper off and it will be more relaxed and calm. And eventually the feeling of loving kindness will feel like it's in the head and you lose any kind of feeling in the body. If something lands on your skin, you'll feel it, but otherwise you're just having your attention on the head and the loving kindness will have moved there. When that happens, that's when you will do the next set of instructions. Mm -hmm.